three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, we are here today to talk about how you can qualify leads using a chatbot. So it's really going to be an exciting episode. Um, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's uh, We're going to change the name of the broadcast to Bits and Bots. So welcome to Bits and Bots. Um, and I keep looking at the screen because I am trying to learn my script to welcome everyone. We're going to be exploring ways that we can use messenger marketing to um, help us grow our businesses every week with special guests. Uh, so hi to the viewers. I see Declan's online. Thank you very much for joining us, Declan. Always great to see you. Um, and um, what I'd like to ask everybody is whoever's here, if you uh, could just comment below to tell us what sort of business you're in. That would be really helpful. And it also gets you the opportunity to talk to each other. So put a comment below and let us know. And we can share those as we go. And also, um, I'd like to ask you to share our um, our live chats with your friends. I know Declan did that today. So, so appreciate it, Declan. Thanks a million. And that's the way we can grow. And then finally, I'd like to introduce Alex. Now, Alex was going to join us last week and we had problems with the technology. So he's here today. And for some reason, mine seems incredibly slow. So I'm sorry if I look completely out of sync, everybody. Um, and Alex is joining us from Lead Freak. He's the uh, managing director of Lead Freak. And Lead Freak and I at Make Digital Work, we've worked, worked together. We've been lucky to work with Alex and his team over the years for a number of clients and still continue to do so. So we've got a very close working relationship. And um, Alex and his team are brilliant at generating leads via anything digital. So um, they've been a very key part of our success as well. Thanks, Helen. So Alex, um, no? So um, that's it. We're going to get started today with Alex. I'm going to pass over to Alex and he's going to talk you through. Remember last week we were going to talk about the restaurant uh, bot that we did. He's going to talk you through that again. And then we're going to explore our demo that we've set up for Declan, showing you how to qualify your leads using a chatbot. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Alex. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Helen. That was quite the introduction. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Um, you know, one of the key advancements in, in really technology that's engaged users and companies and marketers and, and just everyone across the board is chatbots. It is the big thing, but there's a reason why and, it, and it's value. And actually the results that we can get from, from having these chatbots in place. So I want to talk to you about the, um, the bot that we set up for a restaurant chain that we've been working with. Um, I'll just give you a bit of background. This is an annual competition that this restaurant runs, and it's it's the chance to have your own creation, your own food item, added into their menu for the next 12 months. The winners also receive for them and their nine friends or nine of their friends to go to their restaurant for a slap-up meal with lots of drinks. You know, just a really great experience. But getting people to engage in this kind of competition is quite tough. So the original way that they had set this set up was to have people go to their website, to click on a specific page. They ran through the rules and what you need to do to enter this competition. And then you had to email your entry to, to the restaurant, which for me is a very Gosh. convoluted way to, to receive an entry to a competition. Let's put a, a food item on the table. It's a burger design competition. So you're going to have to be quite the burger enthusiast to go to all that effort to enter this competition. Uh, within three weeks, they'd had three to four entries. They'd put a little bit of money behind it on Facebook. That's predominantly who they were targeting. But yet they'd only had three to four entries of their flagship competition. So me and Helen, we, we racked our brains and said, we can, we can do better than this. Uh, and the answer was, was obvious. Let's take the, the entry system to the platform that their users are on, which is Facebook. And we can do that by creating this chatbot. So this chatbot is, is still one of my favorite things that we've done. Uh, basically, on entering the competition through a Facebook chat message, you go into the chatbot function. 
And this chatbot transports you into the kitchen of this restaurant. We had content, uh, images, sound, videos from the restaurants themselves showcased in the bot. So you really felt like you were there. The conversational language that we were using was almost was designed so that you were talking to the chef. And the chef is running through what he needs you to do. You could then engage with this conversation to find out the rules, to find out what the prize was for the competition and how, how to enter. And as soon as you were ready to go, you clicked into a sequence in this bot which ran you through the entry. So using images again, we were able to inspire the people who were entering the competition to, to choose ingredients that they might want to put into this burger. And they could put anything they wanted. And the chat sequence then asked them of a repetitive sequence of say 10 times because that was the maximum number of ingredients what ingredient they would like to enter what ingredient they would like to have in their bird now after two the person could escape this sequence if they would finish designing their burger and then it would go into a data capture collection sequence where we would look to gather emails um, and any other information the restaurant used uh, and then finish the conversation. We backed that up with sequences when the competition was finalized throughout that period of time to keep those people engaged. So we had a really quite comprehensive yeah. sequence within that. Um, and it was just a real joy to run through that sequence as a user. And the results showed it itself. So you know, from the three to four that they got through email, in the same amount of time, we ran this for an extra two weeks, uh, we put the same amount of money in on Facebook to push it. We had over 115 submissions, full submissions of people designing their own burgers through this platform. I mean, if you speaking to the guys at the restaurant, it was almost too good <laughs> because the chefs and the guys in the, at the back end, they need to then review all these designs to see which one's actually plausible and which one's going to be the winner. So it was so successful. You, and the journey that those people went through on the bot sequence was just like I say, it was just a joy. It was, it was a, an undoubted success. I mean, we both we both entered the competition. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the interesting thing thing for us, Alex, as well, is that, is that I know the restaurant owner very well, and of course, they've loved the burger competition because they've created. Um, for a, a really good menu with it and those I think they've added three new burgers to the menus and they're all best sellers so for me the thing is it, it really hits the bottom line as well you've not only engaged your audience and really made them happy what you've done is you've made money and I think at the end of the day it's all about that isn't it uh, when it comes down to why we do these things is we do them so that it can help generate business for the company as well yeah, yeah. so yeah it was a very successful competition yeah, but if you just look at the journey that the users were taken on, not just in the sequence to design their burger, but following it after as well. I mean, they are now, those users have consented to be marketed to from the restaurant um, through the various platforms, whether it's email, whether it's social, whether it's through further chat bot sequences that have been built. You know, these the restaurant now has the opportunity to to maximize the amount of times those users visit the restaurant because so they're able to keep communicating on a, almost on a personalized scale as well because obviously you can tap into what they've previously said through tags, through you know, additional elements with that sequence to really, like I said, make that conversation unique rather than a bland message to everyone. Absolutely. And I think the other thing that I like is that I don't think everybody enters a burger competition. I think the people that enter it are people that are foodies, that like food. So, you know, you're not just communicating with anybody. You, you're communicating with people that are interested in food. And so when you present them with food and food options and special offers to come to the restaurant, they're more likely to engage with that content than anybody else. because. So it's a wonderful way to build up a really good, interested. And I, I think the nice thing is, 
with any messaging. What's lovely is it comes straight to your phone and it pings in your pocket. And you can't help it. I mean, that's our human reaction. We look at it. You know, it's unlike an email. You can just ignore it anyway. Yeah. So that's what I love about messaging is that it's so personal. It's in your pocket. And it's very difficult to ignore. You can, you can ignore it afterwards. But if it's interesting to you, you're going to react to it. You can't help it. Absolutely. And it's so easy. And so another aspect of the campaign, which I believe made it so successful, was you know, given Facebook's targeting capabilities, we were really able to identify the almost like the higher spenders, the, the real perfect client of the restaurant that we know is going to go again and again and again. Because, I mean, you look at some stats around restaurant success and they say a customer needs to visit a restaurant at least four times before they then become a loyal customer. We, we're yeah. adding, we're facilitating that journey for the customer by making their experience with the chain you know, better, innovative, uh, fun, and creative. And who yes, would I agree with you. Having your burger. You're creating a relationship. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Alex, I interrupted you. I said you, you're creating that wonderful relationship. You're having fun with it. You know, it just it's not yeah. just. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel one dimensional that uh, that relationship. It feels it feels so much deeper than that. When when you're talking to the restaurant through a through a chatbot, I, I'm amazed at how personal chat feels if you do it right. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some that that get it wrong because they they don't spend some time on it. But I think we did a great, a really good job, even if I say so myself. <laughs> yeah, and the and the thing is, the infrastructure is there for next time. For the next, when the competition runs again, the infrastructure is still there. Exactly. <clears throat> they don't start from scratch. That's brilliant. Absolutely. Thanks very much. And um, Declan, uh, that's very funny. I'm going to show that now because uh, that's absolutely how everyone feels when you start talking about uh, the burgers. And I can promise you, uh, if I could show you some of these burgers, uh, you would be very hungry. So um, they are delicious. Uh, I don't eat meat. So, I mean, I'm saying this from someone who's an unmeat eater, but I know so many people that go to this restaurant and they just, they say, they say they're some of the best burgers I've ever eaten. So um, it's a challenge. We'll have to, we'll have to find out. <laughs> um, so thanks, Alex. That's been really interesting. And I, I, it's nice for you to be here as well now so that I can, um, I want to run through one of the bots that we are, we are trying to build for Declan just to um, show him how, um, we can use uh, a bot to qualify. But Declan is in multi-level marketing and he's also a coach. And I've known Declan for a long time. And uh, Declan is one of our favorite people. He's an incredibly motivated person and a very motivating man. I, I've worked with him before and I have loved every minute that I, I did. It's the only Emily and uh, Declan are my favorite people. I don't know what's going on there. I'm getting, a, I'm getting, a, getting something coming straight back at me. So. Uh, does that sound, Alex? Do I sound okay? Because I am getting, I'm getting this sort of relay in the uh, or delay in this message that I'm talking. So it feels like it's coming back at me in five minutes later. Uh, loud and clear on my. Uh, end. Okay, that's good. Um, so Declan, yeah, Declan is just one of those people that I've worked with and I've enjoyed working with. And when I was in MLM, I, you know, I loved, I loved it, the time that I was with him. Um, so I know he's he's good to work for, and um, the good thing about Declan is because he's so good, he gets a lot of referrals. So he wanted to know, well, how do I stop tire kickers? And you know, because the worst is if you spend your day as any sales team uh, picking up the phone and talking to people that really don't want to hear from you. They're going to have every objection under the sun, and um, yeah, they're going to have every objection under the sun, and. And you're just going to spend your time talking to them and wishing you weren't. Um, and it drains your energy. I mean, I know what it's like when you're trying to talk to a need and they're not ready to buy from you. So Declan asked me, well, how can we qualify people? Um, so I've built a demonstration bot. I'm, I'm having, uh, I thought that I could share my screen in BeLive, but I'm not sure I can. So, you know, I'm learning as I go, everybody. You have to be completely patient with me. But um I don't see an option to share my screen, which is quite strange. Mm. Let me have a look. And if I can't, then what I will do is I'll talk you through it, and then I'm going to do I'll do a demonstration in Zoom 
and put that up afterwards. So uh, apologies if I can't actually um, show it physically. It doesn't look like I can. So just to give you an idea of how it works with what we've built is we've built a series of seven questions for Declan. Um, and those questions range from uh, you've heard about this opportunity um, and we know that people like you make very good um, connections for our business. So I'm going to just look at this while I talk to you. So we know that people like you make really good connections for MLM businesses. So what we'd like to find out is why you're interested in what we have to offer. So it'd be the same sort of thing as you would do if you were going to make that first call or send someone an email just to ask them why they're interested in what you're offering. And um, what we do then is we run them through that series of questions. Uh, there's seven of them all together. Okay, there we are. I can bring mine up now. So I can't unfortunately bring up the screen, but what I can do is I can run through the questions so that I don't, I'm not making them up as I go. Um, and then I'm going to tell you how we go about qualifying them so that we actually score them for you. So the only leads that you land up dealing with are leads that are ready to buy. Are they hot leads? And the other the other way that we um, then keep in touch is we the people that are cold leads, we put them into a nurture series. So, of course, you don't want to lose people that aren't ready right now, and we all know that. So the first question we ask them is um, we, we put their name in and we say, Hi, Helen. Um, um, I'm, I'm interested to hear a little bit. Are you interested in hearing a little bit more about the opportunities in our fast growing wearable tech industry? And that's what uh, industry Declan's in. He's in uh, technology, uh, clothing technology industry. I think it's smart watches and smart technology that can actually tell you your blood pressure and all kinds of things. It's absolutely amazing stuff. So you can stay healthy and um, it's ideal for and the next part of the message we talk about is it's ideal for switched on entrepreneurial people just like yourself who are looking for ways to earn extra income. So do you think this opportunity sounds right for you? And if they say yes, we then take them into a sequence. At this stage, if somebody doesn't answer us, we're not really going to take them into a sequence at all. We are going to then disqualify them and take them out completely because I think if someone doesn't even bother to answer the first question, um, they're definitely not the right people for you. So um, then we take them in. The next the next thing we say is, well, that's, that's fantastic to hear. And we put their first name in and we let them, at this stage, we always let people know if they want to unsubscribe. We've put a rule into the chat to say if someone's ever pressed a uh, tough stop, they will be unsubscribed from your bot. And that is really important. And I think this is why technology or messaging marketing technology really works for me is because you've got the power in your own hands. You can quickly say, no, I don't want to hear from this company anymore. And that's it. It, it stops it. Um, and it's not like email. It's not difficult. They just press stop or they type and stop and um, all is done. And they won't hear from you again. So then we ask them, the next question we ask them is, are you actively looking at opportunities to earn an extra income outside of the home? Um, and um, if they are, then we say, uh, that's great. We've got a couple of more questions for you. Um, and if the other option we've given them is not, we haven't said no, because if they're not looking again, it's that same thing, we'd, we'd disqualify them. But we, we've put in there, we're not really sure. I'd like to see the opportunity. Um, so that's when we ask them, we say to them again, okay, um, Helen, thanks very much. If you're opening to, uh, open to answering a few more questions, um, we'll be able to see if this opportunity is right for you. And that's really important. It's reiterating again that we are looking for the right people. And then we ask them their first name again, and I mean, we address them by their first name again. So we go, Helen, why are you interested in starting a home business um, or making money from home on the side? Um, and with MLM, that's often the case. You're either looking at another business or you're looking for an opportunity to make some extra money. We've also put a video in here. So at this stage, we think, Declan, you could put a very short video in because you, you're really good on camera and it would be really a nice opportunity for you to be visible to your um, to the people on chat. Yeah, Helen, um, just one and, oh, Yeah, please. Thanks, Alex. I, lo I love that bit. The fact that you're going right back to the re their reason why 
they might be interested in this kind of opportunity because you know that just allows you to I mean, if you were to expand this out to be a bit more complex you could you know just change the entire conversation to be around that one specific reason they feel this is an opportunity for them so rather than you know question two three four which is the same for everyone suddenly question two is completely personalized to the response to question one ah yes that's very true and that's the thing that i've tried to do here is i've, I've tried to think about the questions or the objections that people have or the things that declan's going to ask them anyway and yeah, get them, so it's taking away the objections before they even speak to Declan. I think that's really important. Um, and Rachel, thank you very much. I see you've given me a comment to say, I have to be in talk show mode to show my desktop. Uh, to show my um, desktop. So I didn't know that everybody and apologies. Um, next time I will be in talk show mode. So um, thank you for bearing with us. So the next, um, the next question that we've uh, we've gone ahead and asked is, um, so why are you interested in starting home business? And as I said, we've now given them a number of options to choose from. So I've got debt to clear. I've got to pay college fees. I hate my job. I want to work around my children. Uh, or at Declan's got a great one. I want my spouse to be able to leave their job. And that's unbelievably important question because a lot of people do have spouses that need to uh, leave their jobs and they don't know how they feel like they're stuck with no options so i i love that question again going tapping into each of those different variations imagine now following up that conversation specifically around that problem that they've got it's showing empathy it's showing understanding it's applying the opportunity to their position in life um, and you're yeah. still qualifying them with the next questions that are coming but actually you've now just made it completely more relevant. Yes, you're absolutely right. So we would then score each of those and we'd tag each of those. So within the chatbot, what we can do is we can tag every answer. And so we tag it with the uh, with the relevant word. So maybe it's debt or college fees. So we'd add that specific tag. Yeah. And that means we can always when we're talking to that lead we can always talk to them about their problem and when the salesperson makes that call they know immediately what they're going to what their issue is um so there's no guesswork they don't have to go back and say well you know what's your question what is it that you're worried about and as you say then we put them into a sequence um, we can then put them into a sequence later on that deals specifically, even if we're going to nurture them, we're going to help them with their very specific problem and help them overcome that and see that we maybe have an option for them to be able to get to, to solve that problem. So then we go on. The next question we ask is, um, if we had the right opportunity for you, Helen, would you have a budget in mind? It's not that you have to purchase anything from us, but there we need to know, um, we, in other words, there is a limit on how much you're, is there a limit on how much you're willing to spend to launch a business from home? And then we ask them, what is your limit? And I, this is a question that I thought I would throw in. I know Declan hadn't put it in, but I think it's quite an important question because it's getting rid very early on of people that possibly don't have any money at all. And only because it doesn't mean they're not perfect. It's just not, they, they're not probably ideal. Because I know from any ML and business, any, any business that I've been involved in, it doesn't matter what it is, you need to be able to either have petrol to go and see people, uh, you know, a phone line and all those sort of things, just little bits and pieces. You do need some sort of money to be able to start a business, uh, even MLM. So we asked them then and we've given them three criteria. So they can either say they've got under 1,000, 1,000 to 5,000 or, or 5,000 plus. And of course, we can put in as many iterations as we like. And we've got answers for each of those those um, amounts uh, that they put in. And what we're doing then is scoring them as well, because we are going to be putting these into columns. And we've created, uh, anyway, I'll go back to this later and tell you how, how we go about lead scoring them. Um, so then we put them into the relevant flow that, that deals with that specific amount of money. And if they haven't got any money at all, um, we do ask them the question, so we understand that budgets can be tight um, and that you might have very little, but if I could show you how you could uh, make money, would it be something you would be interested in investing some money in? So in other words, you're coming back to this question, are you really prepared to 
try and make this work. And I think that's so important. And if they say yes, we then move them on to perfect. We'll show you how you can get started. Um, and if they've got money, of course, we put them into what we we score, start scoring them as part of the hot lead. Um, For me, what you're doing there, you're just being transparent and honest. You know, yes. You, you're going into this with your eyes open. We're not going to suddenly be asking, telling you that you need to have a certain budget in order to be open to this opportunity. It's just asking it up front and being honest with people and saying, you know, this is a two-way street. You need to invest in us. Um, into what the opportunity before you get something out of it. Yes, I agree. So sorry, Declan, I'm going to show what you've said there. Uh, show, yeah. So um, I agree. Um, sorry, I'm just going back to my flow. Um, then we, the, one of the last questions, uh, the second last question we ask, and of course we can put in as many questions as we want, and this, this works very quickly. The nice thing is. If you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this on to anybody that wants it. So if you comment below, please send me the demo, or just demo. If you put demo below, I'll make sure that this demo goes out to you. So of course, Declan, you'll get it, and anybody else that's one wants it, let me know, and I'll send it out to you so that you can actually go through it yourself, and you can see how quickly you move through the questions. So we can add as many questions as we like, and I've just taken in a few, and I think it will give us um, an opportunity to qualify them. So the, the second last question is, what uh, if, if we've asked them, did you have you ever worked from home or had a home based? Have you ever been an entrepreneur or had a home based business? And then we ask them if they say yes, we say, well, what business was it? And we give them an opportunity to give us a summary of that business. Um, and if they haven't, we say, uh, uh, why are you considering working from home? And it's not a problem. We can show you how you can get started because I know not everybody who's been in MLM has worked from home, but of course we want to qualify the hottest leads and the hottest leads are people that have done this before. Um, because I've been working from home for years and years and I know not everybody's set up to do it. It takes a lot of self-motivation and a lot of self-discipline. And I think some people start in this game thinking they can, but they find it quite a lonely journey. But one thing about MLM is, of course, it allows you to be much part of something that's much bigger. Yeah. And then our very final question we ask is, we say, hey, I love this question, Helen. What would you do with your free time if you were able to replace your income and only work five or 50% of the time that you do now, or you could put in five to 10 hours a week. And why this question is such a lovely question is it's getting people to dream a little bit. So we're now presenting the dream at the end. And we are giving people the opportunity to say, that will never happen. Um, you know, what are you trying to sell me? Is it a pyramid scheme? What we want to do is we want to get people um, to really start showing their hand and showing us their biggest fear about MLM so that you can you can deal with this when you get on the phone to them. And oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, the uh, Declan, as Declan said, uh, this is a very nice question. Are you coachable and willing to learn new skills? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that you can't. Oh, wow, that's so important. But I think a few of those questions would probably deal with that. If somebody's uh, invested some time and money in running a business before, I think the chances are, and that question about what type of business it is might dig, uh, bring that up as well. What we've done is we've, with the chatbot, what we're able to do, I, I'm sorry, it's so complicated to explain, and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, but what we're able to do is take a product called Zapier and a Google Sheet. So Google Sheet is just like a, an Excel sheet. And we put the columns in there, name, uh, surname, their Facebook ID as well, which is really important because it's a great thing to know about that person. And then, of course, you've got another column that's got their email address. And Facebook pulls us out in automatically. And with Zapier, we're able to populate the spreadsheet automatically. So it's not you going and having to put a name in afterwards. This is done automatically. And then after that, we've got all the questions we've asked in each column. And each of those, we put a little, we put a little, um, we put a zap in for each of them, and it pulls the information. And as soon as someone gives you that information, it pulls it into the spreadsheet against their name. And then we're able to put a little equation in, or a little, uh, a little workout in. You can hear me; I'm a spreadsheet queen. <laughs> You're able to put a little. Equation 
equation in there uh, into the spreadsheet and we're able to say, if they say this, this is the score for that answer. So by the end, you then got a column that says hot, medium and cold leads. And anybody with a certain score gets put into the hot column. And we've then got a very simple zap that immediately sends Declan a text that says, Declan, get on live right now. You need to talk to this hot lead. Because if you can talk to someone within five minutes of them finishing this, I think it's something like a 40% higher conversion rate than if you speak to someone half an hour later. Yeah. So yeah. we so know that this can work. And there you go. 24 hours later, you've not got anything. Yeah, and I mean, Declan knows that probably from live, from talking to people um, even on the phone. So, but the wonderful thing, this is really live and it allows you to be, to get on straight away. And then people that are then medium leads, so they lukewarm, what we'd say to them is we'd put them straight into a flow and we'd automate the whole process that says, hey, book an appointment to do a call with Declan and we'd send them some information so that they've got the information before Declan jumps on that call with them all about the business and make sure that they read it. And then they can book in Declan's calendar exactly what time and date they want that call to happen. And then if someone's a cold lead, in other words, they're really not ready, what you could do is put them into a flow to do something like we're doing today, where it's a Facebook Live or to join a webinar later, or just to send them some information about their pain points because we've collected that information. So now we can put them into something that nurtures them. If it's because the person wants to help their spouse leave their job, imagine if we could help them with information to help them do that. So um, that's really how the whole thing works. And it's, it's quite complicated, but it's a beautiful lead scoring system. And by the end, all you're dealing with is the 10% of really hot leads. You're dealing with them straight away, and the others are going into a system that you can deal with them when you're ready. Does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely makes sense. Um, a couple of points from me, Helen. So one of the issues of lead scoring and certainly around trying to automate that process is you know, asking qualitative open questions where people are free to enter the information that they want. You, have, you To make it as easy as possible, you have to try and restrict the answers that they give. But obviously, you don't want to leave people's answers. Now, a great way that we've got around that is actually is applying a scaled answer every time. So the question would be, out on a scale of one to five, where do you sit? And the question can be yes. whatever it is. But at least one that initially gives you a numerical um, result, but it also shows you how motivated the user is. So it's easier both ways. Yes. And what you can do then is as well, and I'm sure Declan's got some insights based on his experience in this, is you can start to apply personality-based questions into the scaled model. Because it's not just a case of saying, how financially fit and how financially willing are you to, to take this opportunity, Declan's able to then, you know, look at the coaching and new skills. He, the yeah. question could be on a scale of one to five, um, how enthusiastic are you about learning new skills? Or, you know, some other wording around that, but at least it gives a, a more personal representative of what that answer might be. For the for the user, and they're able to apply it on a scale that they're comfortable. With. So you don't tell them what five is, other than it's good or very much <laughs> um, number one, which is the bomb. So they can gauge themselves yeah. where they fit on the scale, rather than just say it's either yes or no. You're a yes or no person. So that that then fits into the lead scoring mechanism to the sheets um, and giving nice. you giving you the answer and, and like say fitting into that system. Lovely. I really, I think that's wonderful. That's really nice. And I hadn't actually thought about that, but I think that's a really nice solution. As you say, it's even, it's refining it even more. Um, and it's really, and this is all, the wonderful thing is that it, it then populates this whole spreadsheet and we can build a spreadsheet as big as you want. Um, and all it does at the end, because we found that with clients is that they don't want to know all the scores. They're not really all that. If someone might, I mean, Declan's quite an analytical guy, so he might want to go back just like you are, Alex. He'd want to go back and probably look at all the figures. And But I know a lot of people that just say, look, I just want to know how many hot leads I've got, how many medium, and then the cold, just let them carry on and, and be nurtured. So it's a wonderful thing if we can just 
present them with their sales team with a little ping in their pocket, an SMS that says, hey, hey John, get on the phone or get on or get on live right now. Someone needs to talk to you. And that that's all they need to all they want to know is how many hot leads can you bring in. So I want I think it's lovely the the more we can iterate those leads so that we can really qualify them. I I, I like that thinking. Yeah. yeah. Same with um same with the warm leads where we're looking to you know book into someone's calendar because you can automate that process now. So you can pull that yes. into the app. So actually take Declan's calendar. Um, he can have certain timeframes available where he's able to talk to these people. And he doesn't need to go back and forth with that conversation, but he, he facilitates them booking a call into his calendar at a time um, convenient for Declan. And that can fit into, into that chat sequence as well. Fantastic. Yes, I do like that. We use Calendly um, and Zapier, but there's a few of them. And yeah, it's, it's such an easy thing for us to do um, is to, to build it into the calendar. So that Declan then has a certain amount of calls every week that he's and he decides what that calendar looks like. He says, I can schedule time in on a Monday between 10 and 2 and on a Tuesday between 4 and 6 and yeah. uh, on a Wednesday between 8 at night. And, you know, so depending on where you're where you're targeting your audience, you can yeah. build your calendar according to that target audience. And um, yeah, I, I, it's just it works so well. It really does, and it populates your calendar, so you've got calls to make. And of course, Declan, because you are building your pap, your downline, this is something that you can you can we can build. You know, that's the wonderful thing for us is for as a business, it's the kind of thing we love doing because we can build it once and then personalize it for your downline as well. So it it, it really helps. Yeah. Imagine so how powerful. Uh, it is. Sorry, imagine how powerful it is that Declan is able to see. Know the problems that that person has, or the the entire reason why they're interested in this opportunity. So that in that conversation, he's not having to find that information out for himself, which is probably a standard process now. He's already there for him. He's just able to pick up the phone. He can instantly connect because he can see the conversation, and the conversation's pulling out those key highlights. So it's just a value-based conversation as soon as Declan gets on the phone. And, you know, I think the thing that I like is it's doing research as well. So this, it's not only qualifying leads, but it's researching for you. So what you start to see is what are the biggest problems people are having? So the next time Declan does a, a webinar live, he picks out the problem that most people have. Uh, I, I hate my job. Uh, you know, how to leave a job you hate. Uh, that becomes your title of your webinar because you know it's what most people are interested in hearing about. Or okay. you've got a live session and you want to invite people. It's the same thing. Yeah. Take that one step further, Helen. What problem is creating the most conversions for Declan? Because it might be someone who doesn't like the job, but actually they're more yeah. than happy to um, sit nine to five at a desk. It's just that particular job that they don't like. So the conversion is probably going to be yeah. poor. But if you can find the problem which delivers the conversion for Declan and then create a webinar around that problem, or he picks his top two or three, um, you know, then he can start to look at personalizing that content based on those problems. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. I think for MLM, it's it's a it's a it's a really exciting option because it's it's the hardest thing is constantly getting on the phone and talking to people that aren't ready to talk to you. Uh, it's it's actually it's soul destroying <laughs> because you know they'll accuse you of all kinds of things. Uh, you know, witchcraft amongst the many so <laughs> yeah it's a tough business it's a tough business to be in so you you, you know I, I think the the more you can help people in it it's a wonderful thing okay guys we don't end the broadcast uh it's due for finish so i just want to say alex thank you so much as always you always add such value to everything we ever do so Thank you so much for being here. Everybody that joined today, I, I appreciate you being here. There wasn't as many as last week, but it will grow and grow. Please share this with people and let them know that we're going to be doing chats every week. If you've got something you would like us to talk about and show you, please let us know. And next time I will do it that you can see my screen. So thanks, everybody, and uh, have a brilliant rest of the day. Enjoy the sunshine. We're here Cheers, in the UK. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Cheers, Alex. Bye.